Welcome to Tamara Tattletales. I'm Tamara and I spill the tea on your favorite reality stars. Hello, I'm Tamara from Tamara Tattletales and I was given the opportunity to interview Mirla from season 13 of Married at First Sight. I've heard Gil give his side of the story of what happened after Decision Day through his various lives and interviews, but what I really wanted to hear also was Mirla's side of the story so I could piece it all together. Well, Mirla opened up to me more than I've ever seen her open up, even on the show. You'll want to watch this one till the end. Check this out. Hi, Mirla. Thank you so much for joining me. Hola, como estas? Ah, bien, y tú? <laughs> Ay, fabulosa, maravillosa. <laughs> ah, blah, blah, taco. <laughs> I talk like super fast in Spanish. Everybody always tells me that. Slow down. It's, yeah. <laughs> Actually, what do you do for a living? Let me ask. Uh, so I'm a partner for a national nonprofit um, in education. Oh, okay. So that's a promotion from what you were doing because you were a leadership coach before, yes. right? Yes, yes. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank Moving you. on up. Yep. Yeah. Always. <laughs> you might be too young to know that reference, huh? The Jeffersons. Probably. <laughs> I didn't watch a lot of I didn't watch. I'm so I'm like Hispanic household, Mexican household. Mm -hmm. Like always, always like Spanish shows growing up and like. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Okay. Um, so anyway, I want to get into this because I know we have a limited amount of time and I you know, there's a lot I want to talk to you about, um, you know, like out of the 10 people on the show, when I, let me back that up. Of the last two seasons, you seem the most content of everybody. You never had anything bad to say about your husband. It really felt like you were trying to win him over. So he'll say yes on decision, on decision day. Yet it never felt like we ever really heard your side of the story of your marriage. So I really want to kind of get into that and kind of break it down. Um, now, finances was a big issue in this relationship. Your shopping habits definitely came into question, but Gil is no slouch. Um, he's got some nice clothes. I see you, Gil, with your little swag. He's rolling in his X5. It's very well put together. So we've heard Gil complain about the way you spend your money, uh, but did you have a problem with the way he spent his? So... I think this was week two, I believe, when we first had discussions about finances on this show. I remember it was like the conversation about finances, right, and savings and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I remember having that conversation. And then afterwards, you know, we wrap a film, you know, whatever. We can obviously we we're going to continue to talk about finances, right? That right, we right. In the minds, and we're like the first time that we've ever discussed this on camera. Um, but yeah, I mean, he disclosed to me, you know, that he would always struggled with saving um, you know, it's just something that was challenging for him. You know, he tried to save, but it was just really easy to pull. Um, or at least that's what he told me at the, at the moment. So my recommendation to him was like, okay, well, this is clearly something that you struggle with. Um, and savings is important. <laughs> you mm -hmm. have to have the savings. Um, so starting today, like I want you to save and you need to save a certain amount every paycheck. And so I trusted that, you know, he took my advice and, you know, obviously things mm -hmm. happen, you know, post decision day and other things. Right, certainly. right. But in that moment, you know, I made a suggestion. You need to have savings. Savings is important. I think he had mentioned his retirement account. And I said, well, that's a retirement account. Retirements are not savings accounts. Right, and then right. He didn't, he didn't disclose that he had anything else saved. And so for me, it was like, okay, mm. save. please start saving as of today. Savings is just very important. And did he say he would? He said he would. Yes. And did he? Well, you know, you know, obviously, like after the eight weeks and things like that, like other things surfaced. And that's when I, you know, found out that, you know, no, there was there had no, not been means. savings happening, you know, as we had discussed or as he had said he would. Uh, OK. The savings that I had from working various amounts of job, that money is not here. Where is that? Back home in Colombia. You still have a savings. Uh, yeah. Even if it's not here, it's a savings. Like yeah, if, you, if you have an emergency, you can pull that money, right? Correct. So basically, just make so sure what it I'm makes thinking sense about for is me. for us to buy a home here, we can't touch your savings account. Correct. Yeah, I mean, I yes. just definitely, I don't, I don't like, I don't think that I have problems with anybody's spending you know you earn your money you spend mm -hmm. 
Right. Okay. As long as you are able to meet your financial obligations and responsibilities as an adult. Um, and I'm gotcha. you know, not somebody's mom. Like I expect and I trust that you will keep your word when you say that you're going to do something. Two, I, you know, I don't, I know he mentioned it, you know, quite a while that like he had an, an issue or concern, but at the same time, you know, I save. Mm. I have savings. I have no debt. I right. have retirement. I invest. Like, how much more do you want me to say? Right, 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 right. Especially, no. I would yeah. definitely take advice from somebody who was in a very, like, maybe in a similar or better financial place than me. But if that's not yeah. the case, I'm just, it just worries me or confuses me. Like, so why are you concerned about my spending when it's not an issue and I don't shop every day? Now, some people were thinking that, you know, some of his designer clothes and stuff you bought for him or that they were gifted to him. Did you buy him any of those clothes? No. Do you know if they were gifts? I, you don't know. You okay. mean like after re like reunion and stuff? Or I just at some reunion. point, because people are just like, well, obviously yeah. someone gave it to her, like Mirla probably bought him, you know, those those nice clothes. So that was people in my comments. We, we bought each other a couple of things, but it wasn't anything ridiculous that, you know, I would consider to be out of the ordinary. So no. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Um, let's see. So there's so much I want to ask you, but I really want to get into the story about what happened after decision day. A few weeks into the season, season Gil said that um, his lease was up in three weeks. So when it came to that decision on renewing his lease, like how did that conversation go? Oh, God, this is a long time ago, guys. <laughs> Sorry. I, know. No, I mean, I think, yeah. yeah, I think for him, I mean, you know, we're it's it's some marriage like we just met each other you know right so far what we know there's not not there isn't anything i think crazy that you know would cause alarm um but i think for him in my opinion i don't know i just feel like for him it was like oh well my lease is gonna end i shouldn't renew it so it's like you, and could, save, you could save some money by not renewing it right and, and so, what was your stance? Did you feel like he should renew it? Because because you still were like a ways from decision day at this point, right? Yeah, we were still a ways. I still have my apartment. I still have my lease well into the summertime. And so I think for me, it was just, you know, you do. I mean, if that's what you want to do, you can do that. I mean, if you lose your apartment, you can always get another apartment. That's, I mean, to me, that's not a something that I'd be worried about. Um, but he seemed to be excited about doing that, and, you know? I'm again, I'm not going to tell you don't do this, do do this. Like you make your own decisions as a grown adult. Right. And I encourage, I did encourage him to put his stuff in a storage unit, which he did put some things in a storage unit. But I think he was just like excited to just get rid, rid of things. Mm, yeah, that was actually going to be my next question. Yeah, but I before, was like, <laughs> but before we go into that, I just wanted to say, um, because it did come up that you do you did have some reservations about your relationship kind of i guess moving into decision day so when he was deciding on whether or not he should renew his lease did you discuss some of those reservations so this is the thing when those conversations were had like i didn't have these reservations mm. like I actually had these conversations pretty early on mm, gotcha. and reservations happened later so to put it in exact dates we had already decided on like moving in. It was mid April when we applied, like when we actually submitted our applications, I think he um, talked about this too. So that means that we had already decided this like probably two weeks before, cause we had already gone apartment shopping or he had you know, gone apartment shopping and we had done all this already like four weeks in. Okay, and how did you feel about that? Did you feel nervous about the idea of kind of getting an apartment together or you felt really confident? I mean, I think I feel good. I think if I didn't feel good, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have talked right. about it. I wouldn't have agreed to do, fill out an application and like go look at apartments. It was exciting. I mean, so kind of let's now get into, you know, him getting rid of his things because he did say he, you know, he got he got rid of everything except for like, what was it? The blender, the dog and his clothes. Now, were you telling him at all? Like, I don't want to live with any of your things. Like, you need to get rid of all this stuff. No, of course not. I would never tell anybody to get rid of everything. I don't want anything. I think for mm -hmm. us, it was a conversation like, oh, this is exciting. We're going to get a new apartment. Like, we're going to get new things because it's like us building something together. Um, my recommendation was to put things in storage. 
in mm. my mind, like I just didn't see the like what's the hurry or rush to get rid of everything. But I think for him more so it was his lease was ending. So like he had to get things out of his apartment. Otherwise he would have to put things in storage. And for whatever reason, like he just didn't want to put things in storage. I mean, I don't know. He just that was his choice. And he already had choice. a storage space, right? Because yeah, I saw he, in an interview where he said that he had a storage space. Yeah, he put, I don't know what he put in their boxes, things. I mean, I didn't go move with, move with him. He had a motorcycle that was, he had an accident on previously that he put in there too. So yeah, he wow. had things in there. If he wanted to, he could have just gone a slightly bigger one, stored some things away. But he sold all of his furniture pretty um, quickly or he wanted to sell it quickly because even some things and I was like, well, just take your time. You can get a better offer or like let's mm -hmm. do a little more expensive. Now, did you get rid of any of your things? I still had an apartment and was paying rent up until the summertime. So, OK, so no when you sell anything yet. OK, so at this point, so now we're uh, in March and you were going to move in and no, you're in April and you're moving in in May. So you decided to keep your place. Well, I, I had a lease. I can't break it. Oh, OK. Lease. Yeah. So you didn't want it. So. No, I'm not going to pay thousands of dollars just to get up one or two months early. And when did your lease end? Like, do you remember? July. July. Oh, OK. So was it your intention then to get to break your lease or not? Nope. To, I mean, to end I mean, your I lease, not break it. I hadn't um, like I missed the deadline to extend my lease. So, oh, I, lost okay. my, so I lost my apartment. <laughs> like, I oh, couldn't. you did. Yeah, I could not get back in it. I wish I could, but I could. <laughs> so that I was your intention, though, right? Your intention was to be the married, you know, live the married life. Yeah. Okay, so he got rid of some things. Now, were you you're planning on getting rid of your things in your apartment, or were you going to move them into the new apartment? No, again, we were going to get rid of things and start together and, like, go So shopping. that was your intention. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, we had talked about different types of furniture that we liked. He had sent me some pictures of, like, it was like a TV console, and I was like, oh, no, I don't like this one. I, don't, I mean, you guys know, right? Right, right. I like this salad. This is my <laughs> I want a leather sofa or I want this. And so, yeah, we had talked about different furniture that we wanted to buy. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, how did you decide on like splitting the bills? Like what was going to be 50, 50, 60, 40, yep. 80, 20? 50, 50, 50, oh, okay. 50. And that was no problem on either side. That was like, just kind of, was there a lot of conversation about that or? I mean, early on we had discussed all like the finances, like this is part of the activities that the experts had us do. We like had a little journal. Mm -hmm. Like we talked about all the things that we paid for, like, oh, my God, down to the T, like how much do you pay for your television subscription or your nails or things like that. Mm, um, wow. but we went down in detail and listed every single thing. And then Ooh, um, I never do that. I know. Right. I was like, hey, this is <laughs> right. It's really interesting to write it all down. Um, Ignorance is bliss sometimes, I but go know. ahead. <laughs> this is where the, the food budget came in. And I was like, well, I spent like eight hundred dollars a month on groceries. Mm -hmm. like what and i was like yeah I mean, do you not buy groceries <laughs> do you not buy our <laughs> groceries <laughs> i'm like you're so dinky how are you eating 800 dollars worth of food every month <laughs> I, I i i buy a lot of i i don't eat out so that's i don't either but i don't spend yeah. a thousand really? but mm -mm. Sure i need to reevaluate my budget for i mean but it's working for you so again like don't take advice from someone who's heavier than you like, do you, know, like you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised how much organic things cost, guys. Like a tiny box of cereal is ten dollars. Like I don't understand mm. why it's ten dollars. So it adds up. Okay, so okay, so he doesn't renew his lease. You hang on to your place, and then you guys get rid of things so that you can bring new things into your apartment. And then you move in together. So now I want to play you a clip of his version of what happens next. So what happened, we'll get into that real quick. What happened was when we were applying for the uh, apartment, she she was doing all the paperwork, all the stuff. I gave her all my information, this, that, and the other. So we had to pay the deposit and whatnot. I told her, go ahead, pay for it. I'll just Venmo you the money. Yeah. And she was like, okay, cool. Well, come to find out, she wasn't cool with that. But she didn't tell me right then and there. Mm -hmm. She told me later. And so when we had the conversation, but I've been wrote her money. She got the money and everything, you know? And so I was like, so the conversation went, well, you're my wife. I don't see why that's an issue. I'm not telling you to pay for me. Just pay and I'll give you the money right back. Right. You know, and I mean, it's, yeah. I get it that you make your money, I make my money, but that mindset has to change a little bit now that we're married. So that's where the, like, the little back and forth went there. 
Okay, so <laughs> what is your response to that? Is that how you would kind of characterize what happened? No, and so like, again, I think I, I shared a little bit about dates. So I, what I will say, yes, mm -hmm. there are specifics, you know, and I will say that I've been disappointed in his remarks. You know, my friends have shared, I think somebody had shared that he said what like some, some of the things that he shared in this conversation um, regarding what happened. And I think for me, he continues to be vague and dishonest. And for me, it just solidifies my choice to end the marriage. Like I have no desire to be with someone who will not own their faults in a relationship. Um, we had conversations. He's talking about, the, again, this was the second week of April, second week of April, right? Mm -hmm, where, right. We're having this conversation. We're laying in bed. We're sitting down. He's on his phone. I'm on my phone. I was like, okay, well, then, like, let's get this done with. Let's do the application. Um, and then I'm like, oh, cool. I just finished my application. Like, go ahead and do yours because you have to, each person has to go in there individually. He's like, well, can you just right. do it for me? And I was like, okay, I mean, you're not doing anything in bed. You're sitting. So like, it doesn't take you more than two minutes to do it yourself. But I was like, oh, cool, whatever. I'll just do it for him. I'm sure he'll take care of it later. Um, so that was the application and then the deposit second week of April. Okay. Um, so no, in that conversation, he did not say, I'll Venmo you, I'll cash app you. Like that was not part of the conversation in that moment. Now, did so you have to not, give your money at that time? Yeah. And oh, so, this so was when, second week of oh, April, deposit okay. an application fee. Gotcha. I didn't get, he didn't reimburse me for that until the first week of May. So like on the first of May? No, like the 7th of May. So you but my did question, this. like, he did not say, hey, go ahead and do it for me. I'll be with you tomorrow. Yeah, that's cool. Fine. I mean, I don't, I mean, it's not a big deal to me. But don't say that you said that, but you actually didn't say that to me in that moment. And that was only after I reminded you, hey, by the way, don't forget. It's this and app and deposit. So it took about like, three weeks. Yeah. You're talking about a three-week time span? Yeah. I to mean, get I don't your know. deposit just, back. Yeah, that's a, that's a long time. That's a long time. especially. So did, did he say? I get this. I'm like, I'm, I don't know what he's talking about when it comes to mindsets. And I'm like, well, what do you mean mindset? This is like, when we both agree we're going to do 50% then. 50%. Do 50%. I'm right. just the type of person, if I owe you money, I'm going to pay you like the next day or like that morning. Right, right. Did That's he say, did, did he give you any kind of indication at all? Like, hey, I'm run a little short. Nope. I'll pay you when I pay nope. you in a couple of weeks. You're my wife. Nope. Now, so that was the deposit. So what about the rent on the first? Was he able to, did he pay that on time? That was another conversation that we had. Um, when we had moved in together, um, I was like, you know, we had been moving all day and I'm like caught up in, we're all caught up in like just trying to move. And it was, you know, he, he like, he doesn't have fun when it's moving time. I, you know, I'm always having fun. And I was like, it's just kind of being moody. And I was like, why are you so moody? And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I just like to get things done with. And I was like, okay, yeah, but this is moving. Day. It's a big deal. I'm like, you right, right. It's fine. Anywho, um, <laughs> I remember we we're like, we're doing boxes or something. And I was like, oh, we need to pay rent. Like, hello. Mm -hmm, right. In my mind, I was like, so how do you want to do this? Do you want to go in there, pay half and half? Do you want to pay at cash app? Do you want to pay at Venmo you? And his response was like, oh, I don't have it. Can you pay and I'll pay you back Friday? And I was like, in that moment, mm -hmm. I was just like, wait, what? Stop. Like, stop. <laughs> like, but he had given up his apartment, so it's not like he was paying double rent, right? No, I'm paying double rent <laughs> at that moment. I'm paying right, double rent. Right, right, right. I was like, stop, what's going on here? Like, I said, stop, what do you mean? Like, you don't have it. Like, what do you mean? Like, what did you what, spend your money what on? What did he mean? I was like, like, <laughs> like what? Did, I'm like, is it something? I'm having a conversation, like, and I'm like, open yeah. up your bank account. Tell me what you spent your money on. And so we're going through things, and I was like... <laughs>
Mm -hmm. so in my mind, like, why not just come up and tell me before that conversation comes up and say, hey, this is what happened. Yeah. So this is a big shock. It was like, I was thrown back. I was speechless. I was confused. I was like, so that to me was evidence that pointed to someone who was not good with money. You know, obviously he had told me that he wasn't good with savings early on. And I was like, okay. right, right. But yeah, I'm sorry. That's a lot for, I've never wow. not had my like rent money in my life. Like for me, making sure that I always pay my bills has always been really important. And so I just, that was tough. That was really tough. Wow. And there was so no apology. There was no like, no conversation like, like cuz he said like well you're my wife so that mindset has to change so with his mindset basically husband. like you need to cover me and you should just be okay with that is you feel like that was his mindset like well i mean i don't know i just, whether i tell you or not like you just kind of need to like be okay with it and just trust to know even though you don't really know me cuz it's only been 2 months right <laughs> or 3 months i know it's only been yeah. 2 months and if this is the first rent that we have to pay together as husband and wife like i am here i want to trust and know that I can rely on you to meet our basic needs. Not right, even like right. ours, meet your half of basic needs for our future. Right, right. So is this, when you had said in a different uh, interview, I don't remember if it, or maybe it was on decision day that you didn't feel, uh, I guess, comfortable with him financially or like, um, was that what the word you used? Yeah. Safe, safe. Like I don't So is this like safe. the scenario that made you, that's I don't major. feel safe that I can trust that you can meet your half of obligations. Things, obligations for a relationship. I mean, again, this is two months in, guys. So right. like, I want to reiterate that, like, on decision day, I did have feelings for him and they were growing, you know, throughout this whole week process. You know, I told him that I was not in love with him and that was shared with him early on in the process as well. I mean, and with the experts, you know, the experts support us, you know, along the way through the journey to talk about these things. Um, and so for me, any obstacles right after D-Day were going to have an impact on our future, right? Mm -hmm. On our future. Right, right, right. And so unfortunately, <laughs> some of these obstacles presented themselves like, throughout the weeks, like a week or two before, and then, you know, after, and I know like this thing of like, you know, saying that he was blindsided by my decision. Well, then I too can say that I was blindsided with the truth. Mm. The truth was that he was dishonest about his finances. And when he chose to not own and apologize for the choices that he made, I made the decision that was best for me. I feel like a lot of these things that happened, I could have known about them sooner. Now, I don't know why I wasn't told those things sooner. And those things being that he wasn't going to be able to afford the rent and the deposit. Now, let me ask you this. Yeah. In that moment, um, did you, because in that clip, he kind of got, he gave the impression that you gave the impression that it was okay. Like you were cool with it. Like you guys talked about it he, and then you were okay with it. And then it came up later. And that's when he was realized like, oh, she's not okay. Yeah. It, in that moment, the deposit and the, um, the, the stuff that had happened like second week of April in that moment, I didn't think much of it. Cause again, I just assumed that he was gonna pay, pay you back right away. It's just not something that was like, oh my God, like, how dare he not? I just assumed obviously that never happened because I just end of the first week of May is when all of that got forward. So for me, it was, Things that were I was thinking about, again, this like the rent stuff didn't happen until after decision day. Right, right, because that so, was you because you guys moved in May May first, correct? Yes. Yeah, so that was a a, a month or two after decision day. Mm, so was, he didn't. That was oh, that was a couple of days after decision day. Oh, that was just a couple of days after decision yeah. day. Oh, okay, so that was pretty quick. Exactly. Oh, okay, that's what I'm saying. So we wow. moved in together, and then like bam, I get bombarded with like I don't have this or. And then oh, we wow. had to, in that point, at that point, we did have conversations. Obviously, I just shared, we had a conversation and I said, this is not okay. Like, it's not okay for you not to have this. Like, But you still kept going, though, like, it's not okay, but we're still gonna, you're yeah, still in it. Okay. There was also during those two weeks that followed, like, I was traveling a lot for work. 
like we weren't talking a lot. That's like another thing. Like we're not talking on the phone a lot as it is. And like, even though I'm traveling and this is the first time that we're going through all this, we had another conversation the like the week, the Friday, it was like a Friday that I had come back from travel. You know, we met and had dinner and then I brought up the conversation again. And I said, all of these things are bothering me. This is not okay. I don't understand. Like, I'm still trying to grapple with how this is happening. And his response was, well, I just won't ask you for a favor next time. And for me, I was just wanting to feel validated. I just wanted, mm -hmm. you know, my husband to say, hey, I'm sorry, I let you down. Like, as a husband, my job right, is to right. feel safe. I'll, 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 I just wanted to right. feel validated in that moment. And when someone says, I just want to ask you for a favor, I'm like, you realized I was still paying for it myself, paying for like, like in your mind, you're, you're okay with that. Like, you don't feel any, like a little bit of inkling of like, Hey man, yeah. like, I shouldn't mm -hmm. be doing this. And granted, it's not about the money. Like the mo I have the money. That's not the concern. The concern is how you approached it. And the fact that you were not honest about it. And kind of taking it for you, granted, taking it for granted. And you're not acknowledging that this is not okay. And at that same conversation, we were talking about, again, saving. And I was going to go to Aruba and I was going to go to Cancun. And we're all talking about finances. And I was like, I don't think that it's the best decision for you to go on these trips either because you need to save and have at least six months of savings. And we did our calculations. And he's like, okay, well, I can do that. And I was like, okay, but it's just in my mind, like, I, I don't want to have these conversations yeah. It's it's common sense to me. Like, why are you planning to take trips when you don't have savings yet? So when it came time to have that conversation um, with him about um, not wanting to be together, like, how did that conversation come about? So we, again, for those two weeks, we had been distant. We hadn't really talked a lot. I was traveling to... Um, we had had a couple of these conversations that were like, it didn't produce any outcomes at all. It was still like uncomfortable. Um, and he messaged me and said, I sent something off. And I was like, well, yeah, we've been talking about this. And so I think he- Wait, he said what? I sent something off. He, he messaged me sent, saying that I think something's off. And I was like- Oh, okay, yeah, okay. No, yes, we've been mm -hmm. talking about things that have not like these conversations. And again, you're not owning anything. So I actually, I don't know what to do. Like can't force you to own things and like, see you're wrong if I've already told you about it and you're still not acknowledging it or how mm -hmm. it's a problem in a relationship. Um, and he called me and I said, I remember, he, I don't know if he, I called him or he, no, he probably called me. He called me and said, so what's going on? And I was like, you know what? I would rather us be in person and talk about this tomorrow when you get out of work. Cause he was doing a 24 hour shift. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, I don't want to wait. I want to talk now. And I was like, but I don't want to talk now. And so I, I talked to him and I told him, you know, this whole conversation that had been playing over in my head. And I said, like, we are just different people and we want different things in life and our core values and aspirations, and beliefs just do not align to what I want in a relationship. And I said, this is just not working for me. And then he was just like, so just tell me, do you want to be with me or not? And I was like, no, I don't. Mm. And then he just hung up. Oh, he hung up on you? Mm -hmm. And then the next day, I remember he, I was working. I think he had gone down to the leasing office and like gotten like a, a lease breakage thing or whatever. So I was like, mm -hmm. And so he stayed for like a month though after that, right? Yeah, it was probably. Yeah, I mean, somewhere like around a month-ish. Because, you know, it was obviously we had more conversations after that. That was in the right, last right. conversation. We lived together. We had a lot of conversations. He wanted to know more. I shared a lot more, you know, and all the things that had happened and how it made me feel. And, you know, just we just had a lot of conversations about it. Um, we went to therapy. Um, I think what was the idea was that to go to therapy? So... I think initially he said he wanted to do couples therapy because I was already going to go to therapy. Like mm -hmm. I was already going to therapy. Um, and so we did a couples therapy to kind of like help us transition and like learn how to live together and like, you know. Right, like, right. That's together, smart. Et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I think after that therapy session, he just didn't feel like it was going to meet what he needed. Or at least that's what he shared, you know, mm -hmm. with me and the therapist. He didn't 
believe in therapy at the moment. And, you know, over the course of the next couple of weeks, I continue to encourage him to go to therapy. I would text nice. him every day, a word of the day. And I would ask him when Aww. I talk to him, like, hey, think about therapy. Like, you really should go. I think it's going to be good for you. Just give it a shot. Um, which eventually he did, which I'm glad. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've heard him talk about it. Like, he's an advocate for therapy, <laughs> therapy now. I guess You're welcome you. for being <laughs> on you to make sure you do go to therapy because I care about you as a person and we share a therapist. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, like I got to roll. What was your original question? Oh, we it was about the, go ahead. Yeah, so I originally, I, you know, I was the one that was, you know, leaving the relationship. So I just felt it right that I should be the one that has to leave. And so that was the conversation. I said, I just feel like I should be the one that leaves. Like, you know, you've already, we moved. You should just be able to stay in this apartment. And then, you know, I'm sure move into a one bedroom. And that didn't end up working out. And then he eventually decided, he's like, no, I'm just going to move um, and find another apartment. I was like, okay, that's fine. I can now, did you really think he would stay in the apartment? Because I would assume if it's an apartment that you had a hand in, it was going to be kind of expensive. So like that he would have been able to afford it on his own. You were offering, so you're just trying I to was, do the right thing. I just felt like, you know, I'm the one that's causing this. And so I should be the one that removes myself. But at the same time, I was like, but if you feel differently, then I'm obviously more like I'm open to do whatever is best or easiest for this transition. Um, but yeah, I think it was probably like a month or a little bit more. Um, but it just, you know, it got to a place where it was just when it wasn't healthy for him. I didn't mm -hmm. like, you know, I just saw him and it was not healthy for him. And I'm like, what I don't about you? Was it healthy for you? No, it wasn't healthy for me either. Okay. Because you're like, like, put it on him. But I'm just like, what about no. you in your moment? Like, okay. Yeah. Because I mean, I mean I, it's, he's grown, like you said, so he can decide what's healthy and what's not. So yeah. it's kind of. Yeah. yeah and yeah. it got to a point where that was impacting me. And I was like, man, I'm like not happy coming home and like being stuck in my room all day. Like, I just need to feel like I have. I can just yeah. be happy because it's, you know. Home is your sanctuary you can't be happy because somebody's not happy. And it was like, well, should I just be sad and mopey just because somebody else isn't happy? I'm like, no, I shouldn't have to be like, I want to be happy. Right. Right. Now, part of that conversation, at least according to Gil on the reunion, he had said that you told him that you were never attracted to him. Is that true that you were so not attracted to him? And so like, again, I was not initially attracted to my husband. Okay, but let me However, show you this. This is what you said on your wedding day. Again, like so. people can find someone attracted. That doesn't automatically mean that I'm going to be. And again, it was my wedding day, guys. It was a long day. Like I was tired. I was exhausted. Like, you know, we get asked questions like 100,000 times. And no. so I wasn't no, me... initially attracted to my husband, but my attraction and my feelings for him grew throughout the eight weeks. Now, let me ask you this in terms of, you know, um, kind of like a, a strategy, would you? Because like if I were to do this show and I would think ahead of time, like, OK, if I'm not attracted to my husband, I'm not going to tell him, you know, like I'm going to lie and try to make it work because, you know, attraction can grow. Yes. So but I'm going to try to keep a poker face and, you know, like smile through it. I mean, like, oh, my God, he's hideous. So I, was that did you have any strategy going into it? Kind of, you know, yeah. things I like mean, that. Was that part of your strategy or I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that's that's what I would do. I wouldn't have admitted it, but I'm not trying to say that's what you did. No. So for me, I knew no matter what happened, because I had seen season one, I had not heard of this. <laughs> I saw season one. I was like, no matter what happens, I'm not going to pull Jamie. <laughs> like, I'm not going to do that. And so, yes, like no matter who I saw down the aisle, I was going to just tough it out and try my best. Because, again, this is like an opportunity that not everybody gets and right, right. And a lot of people. to find me somebody who was for a reason matched with me. And I have been in relationships before where I didn't find someone initially attractive, but then over the course of the relationship, you find them attractive and you grow to like them because you get to know somebody. So for me, that wasn't a concern. I was like, okay, well, I'm not initially all the way attracted to him. Is he a handsome man? Yes. You know, there's a thousand people that can be handsome. That doesn't mean that you're going to be with them just because you think they're handsome. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Well, yeah. No, I hear you on that. Um, now, were you kind of hoping for someone that could split the bills with you? Or were you hoping for somebody who like kind of made more than you and could kind of be like, maybe I got you, you know, like a, no. daddy got you, boo. No, I was looking <laughs> for somebody who was my equal. 
I asked for the experts of somebody, for somebody who was in a similar financial position as I was, that could afford to live the lifestyle that I was currently living. And they're like, oh my God, lifestyle, life, guys, lifestyle means I want to take a trip to Aruba and then a trip to Cancun. And we can both afford it because we save and we have no debt and it's going to be okay. And we still can save for a mortgage and we, you know, we can do all of those things. I wanted somebody who was in a financial place where they could do all of these things with me and go. Yeah. And that's My fair. Equal. Yeah. When I can't ask you for anything more, I'm just right, asking right. I contribute and they can contribute equally. So did it feel like they were kind of just asking you to settle or I, I didn't understand what, what were they asking you to do? Like, what did that mean? Like, stop wanting to travel? Like, what? So I don't think, it, actually, I don't think anybody on the show asked me to sit. I think the, the fans <laughs> mm. are the ones that, like, had a bigger issue with it. Because I don't, I think the experts, Pastor Cal was, like, super supportive. He's like, take the trip with her. Like, let her shop. It's fine. Like, it is fine. Oh, because see, you know, from our point of view, it was more like they were asking you to compromise, like, okay, Marilyn, like you and your lifestyle, like now that you're married, like, and Pastor Cal did say, like, if you're going to purchase something that's like a thousand dollars, you need to ask Gil first. You can't just be running out by spending money. Did he say that? I don't think he yeah, said he that. Did. Yeah, he did. When we were talking about your closet, it was just like you had like, he was asking like, how much money do you have in your closet in terms of clothes? And Gil gave them out. And then he's like, you can't do that without asking Gil. Again, I think people have a misconception about what compromise is. Um, compromise is two people having a conversation. And like, I'm still trying to like, when I say compromise, I'm not going to compromise on the things that are important for me as a person, for my, like for my future aspirations, for my right. happiness, for my lifestyle. And I don't think people understand like, what do you mean by lifestyle? By lifestyle, I mean, I want to take a trip or two or three a year, and I can. Mm -hmm. And people are like, oh, my God, but you need to change. You need to save for home. I can afford to buy a home right now if I wanted to. So why should I stop and shift my lifestyle? We have no kids. <laughs> You're just right, right. I want to enjoy life. If I want to buy a pair of shoes once or twice a year, I can afford. Why should I stop doing those things for what is my question always? Like, right. Why do you want me to stop? Do you want me to put more money into my retirement? Do you want me to put more money into my investments, more money into my savings account? Like for what? And this is the thing I can compromise. But what I don't want to have to compromise are these small things. I want to compromise on. I want to go to Paris. You want to go to Germany. Guess what? Let's do both. Right. I want to compromise on what we're going to eat for dinner tonight. I don't want to compromise on the core values and the non-negotiables that I said were non-negotiables and core values for me. Relationships are already difficult enough. And then you put two individuals who are on opposite sides of the spectrum. I mean, yeah. we're going to have yeah. issues, guys. And those are not the issues. It shouldn't be this hard two months right. in. It should not be this hard two months in. And if it yeah, is, that's I mean, poof. Kind of let's uh, shift gears a little bit and talk about you, Miss Thing, and um, being characterized as a complainer. Oh. Uh, you <laughs> you got you caught a lot of flack of being like a negative Nancy and a Debbie Downer and a um, picky Patty, Rowdy Rita. Okay, okay, maybe I added a couple. <laughs> but um, <laughs> look out now. Hey. <laughs> You're like, no, I call me a rowdy Rita. You just did. Um, but you're not rowdy. Well, I don't know you yeah. like that. But anyway, how would you describe that part of yourself? What were they talking about? How would you describe that part of yourself? So, again, I think people forget that this isn't like a very stressful experiment. Mm -hmm. You're already being placed in a situation that's just hard. Like you're getting to meet your husband, you're have your regular job. And then as soon as that ends and the cameras are in there and then you have no weekends, like everything is very stressful. And one thing I learned about myself is that I do not like others managing me. Mm. I don't like it when others tell me what to do in my personal life. Interesting. Like I do not do well when I'm not in charge of my personal life. And that's not to say in a relationship, but typically in relationships, like, I'm, you know, I, I'm a leader in, in work and, you know, I always have to be making decisions and do things. When I come home, I just want to like someone to like, hey, let's go do this. Let's go do that. You can take the lead. I don't mind. I want to just chill. But this was 
yeah, this definitely brought out a side of me as a complainer. And I so that's not complain. how most people would categorize you as like a complainer. I know they can, no. you know, like your friends have called you high maintenance. You've called yourself bougie, but mm -hmm. the complainer part, you feel like that was new. But what? Yes, because what, what is there to complain about my life right now? I don't know. I don't know your life, girl. <laughs> good. I do what I want I when I want. That. I take trips to nice places mm -hmm. and I pick them out. I just took a trip and I'm the one that gets to do all the things. But and again, I have friends who have similar likes to me. Like they like nice things. Like I mean, now if you roll anything. up to a place, sorry to cut you off, but if you roll up to a place and you don't like it, even though you picked it out, are you gonna be like, are you gonna break it down like you did the oh, no, retirement I home? Uh I stuck it up. I picked it. Stuck it up, I picked it. But no, okay. I mean I complained on the show, of course. Okay. Definitely own my complaints. I want to call them mere observations, but y'all can call them complaints. I was just pointing things out. Y'all want to just call them complaints. Uh, but yeah, I definitely complain about some things. Um, it's tough. It's, it's a tough experience. I definitely want to say it brought like that aspect out of me. And I'm like, oh, I do complain when I'm not happy in these situations and somebody's telling me what to do. But that's mm. okay. I learned. Okay. Live and learn, moving on. Yeah. And let's say I want to honor the time. So I want to ask you a couple more questions that I feel like are super important that I want to play the game with you. Um, so like all season long, the experts, Gil and his friends made it clear that you made significantly more money than he did. And I'm going to play this clip as well. Me and my wife are on a completely different tax bracket. You know, I don't think it's a red flag for me personally, because I know what I bring to the table. Then when it came to the reunion, he mentioned that he brings home $100 more than you every two weeks. And we didn't see you dispute that statement. So is, if he was making more than you all this time, why were he, you, and everybody else saying you weren't? I was blindsided <laughs> with that statement. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I mean... That obviously is inaccurate, guys. I mean, come on. Like, now, did why, he... would I, why would I dispute that? A hundred dollars. And again, my, I'm going to answer your question with a question. Mm -hmm. Why did you not have a savings or why did you not have rent on time or, you know? Well, you can make more that's, a lot of money and still be bad with it. Well, I'm going to dispute it. It's not accurate. That's not what he told me. We both discussed salaries. He asked me how much I made. I told him. I asked him how much you made. He told me it's it's nowhere. Now, what about extra yeah. income? Did he have, because he, he was a personal a, trainer. He like, was, not a personal was he still trainer. no mm -hmm. clients? No. Because his income is um, public, information. public knowledge. So I did look mm -hmm. up his 2020. I'm not going to put it on blast. He Based on... Yeah. I was not talking about salaries. I'm not going to dispute his salary. He told me what he made. His salary is public information. I'm like, why do I need to do that if it's already out there? The facts are out there. Right, he right. He was not doing personal training. He left personal training. I mean, he's told all of us, or at least he told me that he's left personal training because it was unstable. Like one month you were good, the next month you were not. It was just a lot of with COVID or not COVID with the, was in that hurricane recently too that impacted a lot and so he chose to become a firefighter because he was looking for more stability, which is understandable. Um, he was just tired of being a trainer. It wasn't something he was passionate about anymore. And he wanted to be passionate about what he was doing every day. Fair and enough. So yeah. That's not accurate. All right. Unless yeah, something changed after, you know, when we were not together anymore. Unless something changed, you know, I don't know. If well, this, he said it while you were together. So, or, yeah. well, no, I guess it was after it was reunion. It was four months after reunion. Yeah. yeah. So no, he does not. Um, so when it comes to you and Johnny, uh, you, Johnny and Gil have said that the two of you are just friends. So I'm not going to beat that dead horse anymore by asking you the question mm -hmm. again, but I look at these pictures with Johnny and all of the wives except his own. And, um, it's like, everybody loves Johnny. What are the rest of us missing? Like what, <laughs> when we watch the show, this oh. is not the character ratio. You know, like, what are we missing about Johnny that you all see? I mean, I guess we just have to get to know people. Like we, um, Brett, myself, um, and Johnny. Johnny, actually, I think I've shared this before. He hit us up on Instagram and created a team. This was like literally the couple of days after decision day. 
and said, hey, y'all, we want to play volleyball. And we're like, oh, cool. Brett's been a volleyball coach. I play volleyball. We all went and played volleyball one night and we stayed out like super late. And we had all the we we were never friends. I mean, I was never friends with Johnny during the show or any of the guys I was never friends with. This is the first time I was meeting them. And we stayed and we talked about we had heard all that. Like I knew about Michaela's bows. I knew all the girls versions of the situation. Right. And so this is the first time that I was getting to hear the male versions of what happened on the show, because, you know, mm. we didn't talk to the guy. at least I didn't talk to the guys. So it was interesting to hear, you know, now I had like, oh, more oh. context. Mm. Mm. So somewhere in between. But it did make sense for me. Gotcha. Johnny's just, he's a nice guy. He's a sweet guy. Y'all should get to know him. Hmm. Gosh, I wish I had more time with you so I could ask you more questions about that because I would love to hear your insights on that. But um, we are running out of time and I want to honor the time. Um, But I want to play the three minutes, 20 questions with you. So it's like rapid fire-ish. So I'm going to ask you 20 questions. I'm going to put three minutes on the clock. Are you down? Sure. Okay. So it's going to start as soon as I push the button. You ready? Okay. What I do. First celebrity crush. Oh, Del Beckham Jr. If you could bring back any fashion trend, what would it be? Bell bottoms. What's the most embarrassing fashion trend you've you've rocked? Everything I wore in high school. <laughs> <laughs> if a movie was made of your life, who would play you? Ooh, Salma Hayek. Oh, okay. Um, if you had to sing karaoke, what song would you put, pick? Any song by Future, Never Forget. If you could add anyone to Mount Rushmore, who would it be? No, too hard, skip. <laughs> okay. If you had to give up one of these for the rest of your life, which one would you choose? Eyelashes or designer clothes? Designer clothes. If you could live anywhere in the world for a year, where would it be? Paris, because I just saw the show Paris. Okay. Okay. Mercedes or Tesla? Mercedes. If you could choose any two famous people to go shopping with you, who would it be? Oh, that's so good. Mm. Oh, my gosh. So many options. Michelle Obama. She always had, like, the firest outfits. Mm Mm-hmm. Good one. Oh. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Oh, um, uh, Travis Kelsey's girlfriend, Kayla Nicole. Okay, I don't know who that is, but would you rather live where it only snows or where the temperature falls below 100 degrees? Never falls below 100 degrees. Never below 100. Toilet paper over or under? Wipes, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I ask you this one? <laughs> what would you rather throw away, love or money? <laughs> Moving money. on. What's your most useless talent? My useless talent. I, I do my best friend's um, eyebrows. I think that's like useless. <laughs> would you rather own a horse the size of a dog or a dog the size of a horse? A horse the size of a dog. If everyone in the world had to get married when they reach a certain age, what age would that be? 40. What's the worst thing that someone can put on their bio on a dating app? I don't know, man. There's so many cheesy lines. (laughs) Texting or talking? Talking. What is your nickname? Oh, I don't have a nickname. What? Because my name is Mark Mirla. Mimi. (laughs) Uh, Favorite childhood TV show? Oh, there was a novella called Mariela El Barrio. Okay. Boom. You did it with time to spare. <laughs> Serena Williams, Mount Rushmore. Yeah. I love Serena. Oh, okay. Too late. I know. I already passed that one. But no, that was a great answer, though. So thank you so much, Mirla. I really appreciate you coming on and really sharing your story and trusting me with your story, first of all, um, because I do feel like you opened up and you've answered more questions. I I wish I had more time with you because I still have like 20,000 more questions for you. I'm, I appreciate it. I'm excited that I got to see you put a, a face to the voice, the mysterious <laughs> voice we all get to hear. <laughs> yes, you did. All right. Bye-bye.